For the past year or so, the single biggest study of UK roads ever has been carried out. It's been backed by the Highways Agency and Institute of Advanced Motorists. Experts have driven along a third of the road network so far, analysing design features like how tight the bends are or whether there's armco in place. Bad driving may cause an accident, but bad road design is often the killer. Essentially, what they've done is work out how well a road protects you in a crash and then given it a star rating between one and four, with four being safest. And the results, well, they're startling. Half our motorways and 11% of our A roads get the maximum four stars, but get this, 40% of our roads are actually classed as inadequate. 40%! Makes you wonder where that 5.5 billion quid's worth of road tax gets spent now, doesn't it? One of the big problem areas are country roads, where solid things at the roadside, unguarded by fence or armco, can earn a road a one-star rating. Today, nine people will die on British roads. Of those, six will die on a road... just like this. A staggering two-thirds of British road deaths happen on country roads, in part due to the hazards posed by hitting static, dangerous objects like trees. And we're not just talking boy racers in hot hatches getting caught out here. Eurorap says it's often the responsible, law-abiding drivers who come unstuck. One in 500 driving decisions is said to be wrong. And if you're on a one-star road, that honest mistake, it could be fatal. Of course, all of this throws up some really interesting questions. We're all well used to cars with a five-star Euro NCAP safety rating, like this Renault Laguna. There's been some serious engineering that's gone into this car to make sure that you're protected should you have a collision with another vehicle. But if 40% of rural accidents involve hitting trees, what we want to know is this, how well does a five-star car protect you if you have a crash on a one-star road? We've called upon Myra's high-speed winch to help find out. At their crash test area, they have a tree which we can use for this experiment. It's dead and was due to be chopped down. But we're going to use it in the name of science. It's exactly like the ones you drive past on your way to work. So which one do you think is going to come off best, Mother Nature? or state-of-the-art engineering. We'll fire this five-star rated Laguna at 55 miles an hour, which is a typical speed on a country lane, into the tree. It will simulate a car running straight off a one-star road at a tight bend. We know the car should protect you very well if it hits another car, so surely it will protect you if it hits a tree. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Uh. That'd give you a headache. Come on. What makes this devastation particularly sobering is that on a quiet country road, the accident might not be discovered for quite some time and it would take the emergency services longer to get there. The first thing I wanted to check was the passengers, and remarkably, it looked like the Laguna's passenger cell had stood up to the attack pretty well. Well, the door still opens. That's amazing, I really wasn't expecting that. The pedals have moved, and it looks like his left leg will be fairly badly damaged because there's been a knockback through the pedals and there's some intrusion again in the footwell. Although the interior doesn't look too bad, this car has decelerated from 55 miles an hour to zero in just over a metre, enough to cause massive trauma to your internal organs. But to really get a sense of the energies involved, you have to look at the front of the car. Look, that's one corner of the bumper. That's the other corner. They've almost met. You can touch them together. The car's wrapped round the tree. Indeed, the aerial view shows the energy dissipating, rippling the solid metal bodywork as it goes. Given the vast majority of cars on our roads don't have a five-star safety rating, the results of similar crashes are often even more horrific.
The tree remains rooted to the spot, ready to catch the next driver out. No wonder countless people die in the same places over and over again. And yet a simple, relatively cheap safety fence around this tree is all it takes to make the road safer than a one-star rating. And that's not all you could do. A speed camera positioned correctly can reduce the risk of accidents by up to 10%. But a lick of paint to improve road markings is said to reduce the risk of bangs by up to 35%. Something to think about. Another idea would be to make the driving test less urban orientated and introduce a rural component that teaches new drivers the dangers of twisting country roads. In the meantime, we're not saying avoid these one-star areas, just adapt your driving to compensate for the dangers, because your five-star car might not save you if something goes wrong. Let's hope the work of Eurorap and crash tests like these put safer road design to the top of the agenda. It's horrific. The sensors on our 18 kilo toddler showed that it left the seat at 30 miles. Here we go, here we go. Oh, here we go. 